Remember the oppressed Pharisees, you rich aristocrats in Israel who have inherited the places of the sons in Judah and, and the sons of Aaron and the sons of Gershon, Merari, and Kohath? What, what, why y'all haven't been coming together with that blessing that y'all have from y'all forefathers to help the oppressed of your own people who are related to you even by tribe? These, these ain't even Gentiles that they neglected. These ain't foreigners from all the other nations. This is their own brothers and sisters that they ain't never lifted a hand to. To the point that when Herod's temple was built, they made sure that they used a bridge to walk over the common place in the market so that they wouldn't be touched by sinners. Huh? I mean, man. Yo, go over to Mark chapter 11. Mark 11. When we get there, we're going to read verse 18. Mark 11. And we're going to read verse 18. Mm-hmm. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and saw him how and saw it how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. Why was they? Because the people were astonished at his doctrine. Brothers and sisters, his teaching, honestly, we want to have the effect, according to truth, not just for preaching's sake, but according to truth, that when we put on the table to the masses what the truth of the gospel is, we want people to hold their head. Not in any admiration of us. You ain't even got time to think on us. On what you just heard. The doctrine need to have you put your hands on your eyeballs and just be like, man, I, 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 I got to totally rethink. I got to totally rethink this thing. I'm astonished at what I just heard. Once again, what did Christ teach? Read me one place where he taught on us about what it means to keep the Sabbath. Besides when he was asked a question and tempted and he rebuked them and told them what the Sabbath really was about. Besides that, show me where he went city to city and sent the disciples city to city to teach you that the seventh day is the day that you shall have convocation on. Or show where he sent them city to city and they had to tell the people, man, y'all eating this pig meat and this shrimp? No. That, it, it, it didn't have nothing to do with that. Or, or did he go and say, look, is y'all running around here saying, uh, 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 uh. yeah, or, or, uh, however they say, try to say Yahweh in, in, in Greek. Is y'all running around here speaking that Greek, trying to call upon the Father? Don't y'all know y'all got to say Yahshua? <laughs> Y'all got to say your hope she was, don't you know? Jesus ain't running around telling nobody that. Everybody he was around spoke Hebrew. So what did he teach? This is the question I always ask. Now, Sean always bring it up. Judah always bring it up, Tim. What did he teach that made them astonished? You know what he taught? You know why the poor would be astonished? Yo, what kind of teacher would love us? Ain't that evil, though? That the people were in such a condition to not have love from their leaders? Yo, I yeah. <laughs> to have a lack of love for their leaders that when a man come and tend to your needs, it's astonishing. Just like when we when we seen that boy, when he was chilling, you know, when we was chilling in front of the uh, store. Oh, yeah, we was chilling in front of the store, and um, the dude, he was just, you know, he, we we seen him, but we didn't know what he was doing. But he was picking the trash, so you know, Zayda got out and was talking to him, and what made me mad was he was a he. When Zadar asked him what he was doing, he said he was just feeding the birds. And that's when um, Zadar was like, you know, now, nah, you know, it's just me and you here. You know, what you what you, what you you doing? You hungry? That's when he just put his head down and, you know, shook his head. Yeah, that right there was crazy. Because yeah. he, he was ashamed. Like Zadar said, he probably, he probably was like showing him away from garbage just because you it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Just showing him away from the garbage can. So when you put your garbage outside in front of your house, and you going in the comfort of your home, guess what? Somebody coming by looking for soda bottles, water bottles, or even food. When you didn't finish up that food or you're not going to eat, I don't, I don't eat leftovers. And you just toss them in the garbage, 
It's somebody possibly coming through your neighborhood under the cover of darkness trying to eat. True. Because they don't want to be seen because they're ashamed. Yeah. Me and this man sitting in front of the store waiting for my little niece to come out shopping for my mom and seeing him in the peripheral. But didn't pay attention. We thought he was one of the store guys just changing the garbage. And I just see stuff flying. And so it caused me to look. I said, yo, what is he doing? It was a brother. And I got off the car. Just, I was like, yo, what is you doing? And when he see me, he don't know if I work. Maybe he like, oh, this dude worked for the... He, I believe he thought I was about to tell him, yo, you can't be around here going in the garbage can. So he said, oh, I was trying to feed the birds. I said, I ain't want to, like, yo, don't lie to me. I, I was just like, yo, I said, yo, bro, it's just me and you. You hungry? That man put his head down. <laughs> Didn't even look me in my face and said, he did that. It pissed me off that in a country like this, a man could be in that condition. Now, I don't know what happened. Maybe he got strung out on drugs. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he did something wrong. Maybe he didn't. That's not my concern to get an application from you on what you did in your life to be to this point for me to have a compassionate heart. So here, man, all I got is 20 bucks. Take that and just get you something to eat today, tomorrow. If you're doing this, you might sleep. You might be outside real late and it's going to be cold. You might grab a brew with some of that money. I don't know, but that's all I could do. And what it do? Me and this man in the car together, we just looking at each other like, what answer? What could we have did further to help him? And that's when what we're involved in becomes more real. Mm -hmm. Why are we sitting on our hands? Why is we acting like it's not a big job to do? People need help. I would have loved to have been able to say to that man, Yo, we have somewhere if you want to sleep tonight, if you want to take a bath tonight, if you want to eat a meal tonight, you want to meet some people who care tonight, we ain't got to send you to Harbor House, Friends of the Night People, City Mission. Here, take this address. You're not going to be forced to go. You want to come, make it to the street, brother, this evening. I would love to be able to do that, but I can't do that by myself. I'm supposed to be with y'all doing that. So what we going to do, all you people online, what y'all going to do? This word in our mouth is only that, a word in our mouth. It doesn't always translate to a result in somebody's life. Solomon's wisdom and the wisdom of Christ was to get it done and get it done immediately. And before Christ started getting it done, guess what he always had standing behind him? 12 at the least 12 he had a team the son of salvation had a team you and i need a team one mind one accord let's get it done let's get it popping 24 bars let's move on Ecclesi go back to ecclesiastes chapter 4 ecclesiastes 4 mm -hmm. Yo, thanks Don. Ecc ecclesiastes 4 let's go back and now ah right, let's look at verse Start reading at verse 8. Uh -huh. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yet he have neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor, and bereave my soul of good. This is also vanity. Yeah, it is, it is a sore travail. Working all the time does not produce happiness. Working all the time usually causes pro problems. Whether you rich as heck or not, you cannot always push for somebody to be stuck all their life working. Every single day. Ain't no time to do nothing else. Sometimes I just want to enjoy my wife. Sometimes I just want to enjoy my friends. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to enjoy solitude. I don't need nobody around me, my wife. None of y'all. I just need to be in prayer and thought right now. Something got my mind bugged out. I need to be alone for this next four hours and just really be like, okay. Now how you going to do that then? <laughs> then I'll come and get up with y'all. Yeah, I just, my fault. I know I was a little off, but I, I just, my mind was just gone a little bit. Do you know that if we working all the time, we can't get nothing done? And that's for, some of us got families. You got somebody here who ain't got no kids. They ain't got nobody with them, and they always working and, and don't see no end of it in sight. 
And, and Solomon said, I'm watching people who live like this. And they never stop to think, yo, who is I'm doing all of this for? What am I doing all of this for? And they never satisfied with riches. Wall Street, government, all of that stuff is indicative of this. But even the person who is oppressed, when he see that's what everyone else do to make it in this capitalist society, guess what he do? He try to become like them. So now he's starting to work all the time. I know guys on a construction job who work 70 hours a week. And they be having issues at home because they not there. I had a truck driver. They laid me off and called me back to work. They laid me off and called me back. I thought I was done. They called me back because another dude was like, yo, I got to go home. I've been working nine months, 60 hours, 70 hours a week. My wife told me she tired of it. But he doing it. Like, I got to feed my seeds. I got to take care of my family. So brothers can't be lazy, but yet we can't be stuck in a life that's just nothing but work. We need time away from it. We need time off from it. Because if we don't, we're going to hate it. Especially those of us who already got a disdain for the system. We working around people who don't give a crap about what we're talking about. You just want us to be stuck in that environment every day. Sisters need to understand what they what their husbands have to go through. If you got a husband and you don't have to work outside the home all the time, you need to understand the environment and sometimes the physical peril. That The first thing they teach us in the construction field is, yo, every year this many people die on construction jobs. That's the first thing they tell you in the classroom. So if that happened to happen to me, God forbid, I at least want to have looked back and been like, I did the best I could to just not be here all the time. I put work into the gospel. I put work into my, my, uh, my wife, my children, my mother, my nieces, nephews, my friends who I love. I had time to love them and be with them just as much as I had to put a lot of time into the job. Just know that we can't live like that with no end of our labor in sight. Verse 9. Two are better than one. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they if they fall, the one will the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls, for he have no, not enough to help him up. Now that could be in a job sense, but what about life sense? Life. That's why I pray that, especially marriages, that husbands and wives always work to work things out, because that man gonna need that woman. He going to come into a situation where he really need her. And she going to come into a situation where she really need him. And for those who don't have a spouse, they supposed to have us. What happened when the single fall into a rut? Who they got? This is what the togetherness is about. Making sure you don't fall in your life alone and don't nobody know nothing. You just suffering and don't nobody know nothing. Verse 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail, if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a, three, and a threefold cord is not quickly bro broken. T togetherness, right? Yeah. Togetherness. Is what our strength is in. If we work together, brothers and sisters, then I don't have to work as much because I'm not working as an individual to take care of my individual home. I'm working with a group to take care of us, and that gives me my rest. That's where my opportunity of rest comes from. Can you imagine one farmer farming 20 acres? And do you know what they do? The capitalists say, no, be a capitalist. And keep everybody out and just get the right machines and you can do it all by yourself. You don't need nobody. Who you going to talk to? The dog? The machine? Or do you talk to your brothers and your sisters who are working with you? Talk to your brothers and your sisters. I mean, it is people who talk to dogs. I talk to dogs. I ain't going to lie, you know. Because I love them. I had dogs. They get talked to them. They get talked to, but... You know what I mean. When it comes to life and decision making, I got my brother, I got y'all there. And that's been, you just don't know how much being a part of this congregation has been an advantage for me. I have an advantage, I feel. But I want us to take advantage of our advantage. <laughs> uh, let us continue. Ak, 
Let us go over to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. 